A lot of our thoughts revolve around our social relationships with other people. We spend a lot of time unconsciously processing the data of our social interactions, forming mental webs of information of the people we interact with and gauging how those interactions affect ourselves and our positions in the social sphere. For some people, the negative words of others can leave us feeling down and dejected for days on end. Words tend to reveal deeper feelings and intentions that the speaker may have about us, and we spend a lot of time deciphering these words to reveal those intentions. The mind is constantly trying to establish where it is we stand in relation to everyone else. The mind exerts much energy analyzing the daily words and actions of others, allowing us to make decisions as to who we should perceive of as allies, enemies and all gradients in between. This pattern of thought behavior has evolved as a survival mechanism from tribal times when our survival depended heavily on our alliances with other people and tribes. Resources were commonly shared among alliances and thus networking was an integral part of survival. The paradox here is that for many, the far lengths our mind goes to to protect us from such threats will also carry its own burden on the body. Being in a constant state of overanalysis and worry will oftentimes put us into fight or flight mode, will tax our body's energy reserves and nervous system, leaving us more stressed, nervous, and ultimately burnt out. Sometimes negativity may be directed at you via an overt verbal attack, via passive aggressiveness, or simply by the withdrawal of attention to elicit a negative response from you. It is perhaps best to think of social interactions as energy exchanges. Every time you interact with someone, you are exchanging energies with each other, the outcome resulting in a more positive, negative or neutral state. You will find that interacting with some people will amplify your energy whilst interacting with others will deplete your energy and leave you feeling drained. Why does this occur? Different chemicals, when mixed together, elicit different reactions. When you mix cola and water, there is no observable reaction, whereas when you mix cola and Mentos candy, the reaction is explosive. Your human body emits its own unique frequency of energy that is constantly expressing itself. We can become especially aware of our own energetic frequency when interacting with another's as it serves as a reference point to ourself. When humans interact, their energies are also interacting and reacting to each other. Much like the playing of two musical notes simultaneously that would result in either a harmonic pairing or in a clash of dissonance. As do musical notes, human energies too will resonate with certain energies and clash with others. If our energies are vibrating at a frequency similar or on the same scale as another, they harmonize and are felt by both entities positively as they form a synergistic bond. This is the feeling you get when you have a great interaction with someone who you feel is on the same wavelength as you. You can feel your energies harmonizing with each other and feeding you positive energy. When you think of your interactions in this way, you may be able to have more understanding that the inability for you to get along with someone is perhaps not your or their fault so much as it is a dissonance of your energies. There is nothing personal here. It is not water's fault that it cannot mix with oil, just as much as it is not oil's fault that it cannot mix with water. The entities are not structured to merge. 
There is no reason for you to take any such negative social interaction to heart. Many people have reported that on their semen retention streaks, they experience uncontrollable emotions and stronger irritability in social situations. Situations that were not so stressful in the past become harder to deal with whilst retaining. The behavior of others that previously didn't annoy us may suddenly become very off-putting and our reaction can be surprisingly strong. At times we may even experience outbursts of anger. Now that you have stopped the constant draw on your energetic resources via semen loss, your brain has a lot more energy at its disposal and many areas of brain activity may become hyperactive. Emotions become stronger, our gut reactions can become almost palpable, and impulses to assert ourselves more aggressively may manifest themselves. The increase in testosterone that anecdotal reports of long-term retention indicate may also play a role in the increased aggressiveness. It will take some getting used to this new state we are in and dealing with this excess energy. On a physical level, those practicing retention would do well to work their bodies physically to fatigue every day. To engage the body in much work and physical activity as well as mental activity so that by the end of the day we feel a strong desire to rest. To deal with these physiological changes during retention it would be of much benefit to remember the following. We have no control over the output of others, yet we have total control of how we interpret their energy. An insult is not an insult until we decide it to be. To not allow the words of others to affect our emotions is one of the most important rules we can learn to improve our happiness and ultimately our health. As Marcus Aurelius wrote, If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. If any man despises me, that is his problem. My only concern is not doing or saying anything deserving of contempt. Commencing semen retention involves restricting your body from experiencing orgasm. An orgasm is much like any other drug as it causes significant amounts of dopamine to be released into the system, creating a temporary relief and numbness from stress. You have become used to this instant reward. This is perhaps why people especially tend to relapse when they're under stress or experiencing loneliness. Much like a drug, it can take the edge off life. People get addicted to this feeling easily and giving up this luxury can sometimes be a lot harder than one first envisages. There is an adjustment phase where you will have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. For many, this is where relapses begin. For the one with a strong resolve to quit, this will be merely a test of their own resolve. We get to decide whether to be offended by others' actions. As Epictetus said, it is not he who reviles or strikes you who insults you, but your opinion that these things are insulting. To not allow other people's words to have an emotional impact on us is a skill that can be soundly developed. It is a central principle of Stoic philosophy and will help you deal with people and life in general, especially whilst on your retention journey. You may have learnt this on the playground as a child through the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Many times though, it is not an outright attack that we must face, but a passive attack such as ignoring and social exclusion. 
These methods are more commonly applied in today's world because an outright attack would bring unwanted attention on the attacker, whereas a passive attack allows for plausible deniability. For many reading this, their automatic response to insult is offence and feelings of personal attack. Perhaps even worthlessness and feelings of not being a valid human being or member of the social group. The way to deal with such an attack is to not take it as an insult. It is only an insult because you perceived it to be that way. You could have perceived the words in any way you wanted and you decided to perceive them in a highly personalized way. Perhaps even connecting many of your self-perceived shortcomings to the negative words of your companion. You can change how you perceive an insult and its effects will dramatically improve your mental well-being. It is in our power to have no opinion about a thing and not be disturbed in our soul. For things themselves have no natural power to form our judgments. There are many people on this earth who don't feel the slightest bother by another's words. They are nothing more than whispers in the wind. They realize that people they are interacting with live in totally different realities to them and their perspective holds no bearing on their own existence. Remember, you and your fellow man do not inhabit the same brain. You do not inhabit the same universe, just similar versions. You are playing two very different versions of a game or watching the same movie but from a different character's perspective. Sometimes we get to see the antagonist's perspective in later movie sequels and realize they weren't so bad all along. Perspective is everything. Even the way we perceive colors may vary from human to human. How are you so sure that the light blue you are looking at is not a darker shade or different color in the eyes of your companion? It is difficult to confirm that the blue I'm looking at is the exact same version of blue that you're looking at. This is an important point to keep in mind when experiencing conflict and a difference of opinion with others. We need to understand that they don't see things the way we see things because they are in a different version of this world than us. They are playing a different game. This knowledge should free you. No one's opinion has anything to do with you. It is just their reaction to a version of you in their story and that is not the real you at all. That version they are hating on is not you. It is a character that exists in a different universe from where you exist. It is but a shadow of a shadow. There is nothing to be taken to heart about this as it has nothing to do with you. The person you interact with lives in a universe where they are the hero and are trying to live happily ever after. And anything that appears to hinder this objective gets violently rejected. Try to develop a sense of sympathy for this perceived enemy. Next time you're insulted by them, keep in mind, every man has his secret sorrows which the world knows not. And oftentimes we call a man cold when he is only sad. Hurt people hurt people. That's how pain patterns get passed on, generation after generation after generation. Break the chain today. Meet anger with sympathy, contempt with compassion, and cruelty with kindness. Greet grimaces with smiles. Forgive and forget about finding fault. Love is the weapon of the future. When you experience someone being undeservedly antagonistic towards you, realize that they are merely fighting with themselves. Those words hold no bearing on you and your existence. When you experience someone willfully ignoring your existence, remember the reflection they see of you is reflecting something in themselves. 
developing a sense of compassion is perhaps more useful than anything else. People don't set out to be evil, they think they are doing the right thing, yet many are still operating from lower levels of consciousness, lower emotional states with lower frequencies. Be thankful you have elevated to be able to see this and don't allow them to pull you down to their level of thought. Develop compassion.